Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Video Game Drive-By. We are about to finish off the, uh, the year. We figured we'd do what we did last year. For those who are new, we, uh, what was it? We basically kind of ask each other, you know, what was, what our favorite games were, least favorites. Oh, yeah. That we've, we've done on the show for the past year. The only, the only requirements, though, it does have to be something that we played on the channel. So we can't just say, you know, any other thing that we haven't done here. And it can only be in the past year. Oh, darn. There's a couple of the games what? that I hate I didn't actually play on the channel. Are you serious? <laughs> it's okay. I can come up with stuff that we've played on the channel. Like I literally asked you before we before we did this. You probably asked me before I ate something, and that's, that's what it was. <sighs> All right. That's fine. Okay. So, now we might do a little bit of Amiibo stuff. So, did you... Do you want to do like an actual, like actual matches while we do these, or just have the amiibos? Yeah, we can let the amiibos fun. go at it. Just have them. Okay. Yeah. Is that? Uh, hold on a second. Uh oh, forgot we did random. You know what? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Who who are you uh, sending first? Uh well, mercifully I could not locate my Kirby amiibo, which is weird, but you know, had to make you feel Wait, better. What's, so what's that? Oh, that's a Jigglypuff one. Yeah. I, I saw I saw round and pink. Sorry. Uh. So what do you... Oh, yeah, go. I think you might have to use mine. Oh. Give me that. Uh, oh, this guy? Yep. All right. You're a... Dee -dee 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 -dee. <laughs> okay. All right. I just started training for my Lucina. I'm going to have her do stuff. There we go. Have a, have Girl Marth fight. Okay, so... Oh. All right, so first off, your favorite game that we played this year. Favorite game we played this year? Uh, I mean, that one's easy. I'm pretty sure you already got this one predicted, but Maze. Really? Yeah, loved it. Okay, I kind of figured, I mean, I thought it would be more, uh, like, the, what was, what was it, the uh, most surprising, like, surprisingly good game, I thought. Did you just have your, your DDD just, like, belly flop everything? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Because he was doing that for a while. But the, um... No, I'd probably have to say, for my favorite one, and I feel like this might be a, um, you know, someone's probably going to get mad because it's going to sound like I'm, you know, late to the party fanboying or something, but I would probably have to say Undertale. Yeah. Just because, like, other games were, like, they were good, but others I might feel like they weren't as good or they were good, you know, still on their own merits. Yeah. But just not as good all around. Yeah, on its, you know, the different strengths and Plus, whatnot. Plus, when a game explodes the way that, that Undertale did, sometimes, in order to get a proper opinion on it, you got to get out of the zeitgeist on it, you know? Yeah, the zi oh, right, what you said, uh, basically, when all the hype's done? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That I, way, you're not just... It's like, um... Like how the dude is belly flopping like so It's like when you watch a sitcom and there's a joke that's not really funny, but because there's a laugh track, you instinctively laugh with it. Yeah. Yeah, so by stepping away from that, you can think to yourself, is this really good or am I following the hype? And Undertale really, really is fitting with that hype. Like, what it, uh, what it kind of reminds me of, you know that thing that, I don't know if you'd call it a meme, but how some people, um, they would do Those the... Are... What? <laughs> He missed hitting the, uh... Oh, the final smash? Yeah. The, um... How was it? Like, uh... When they have the Big Bang Theory, but they take out the laugh track. Yeah. And it feels very, uh... Not, not nearly as humorous as maybe you thought it did before. Yeah. Well, the reason... I mean, for me, I'm just not a fan of, what is she doing? I don't know. But I actually watched a video about that today, and I realized why those kind of videos... Because they do it with other sitcoms, too. Big Bang Theory is easy because it's kind of the, the junk food TV series. You yeah. Know? But those shows are intentionally written with the laugh track in mind. So, one, characters never react to jokes. Because the audience is supposed to. Yeah. And two, they always add in the pause for laughter. So when you remove the laugh track, it makes all the conversations, even the jokes, way more stilted because just the, awkward the regular human the reactions aren't there. Because they're expecting a... Yeah. Um, they were discussing how like um, like Chandler is the funny one on Friends, right. and everyone calls him that. But if you watch the show back, nobody ever laughs at his jokes. And when you take out the laugh track, he stops being the funny one and starts being the unsettling one who is just slowly dissolving into madness because nobody laughs at him. You know what I notice when I'm looking at this? Yeah. How the engine fits inside the rest of the hammer. Yeah. 
Because, like, I never really, like, studied how the size of the engine compared to the body of the hammer, and now I'm like, wait, where does the rest of it go? Like, does it... When it closes up, how does that... It squishes. It squishes? Or the hammer itself contains a pocket of hammer space. A pocket of hammer space within the hammer? Yeah. All right. All right, you want to start up a... Did you still want to put uh, keep DDDDD in there, or...? Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep him going, because he's so far a uh, perfect record. Uh, okay. Undefeated. So let me <laughs> swap out a different one. Uh, you know what, I'm going to... Nah, I don't want to send my Bowser yet. My Bowser was doing the best one so far. Yeah. When, uh, when I was, during my test runs prior. But, okay, here we go. So, worst game. Hmm, worst game. That we played on the channel. This year. So, yeah. So you can't say uh, Fallout 76. Honestly, I'm going to go with one that I wanted to be good because everything about it sounded like it would be great for me, but I ended up just really disliking it, and that was uh, Paranautical Activity. Oh, yeah. Because I like a good uh, first-person shooter. I like a good roguelike. I mean, look how much I love Binding of Isaac. And it mixed both of them, And but... then the controls were just so bad. Maybe it's better with a mouse and keyboard on PC. I imagine it has to be, but... It just did not translate well at all to the Switch. And yeah. while I only spent like 99 cents on it, that's the only one of those 99 cents ones where I don't feel I got my money's worth of enjoyment out of it. Yeah. Like and the other ones, you know, you wouldn't think that they were a, only a dollar. Like what, what else was there? Brawl? Yeah. That brawl, sausage. Sausage sp the, animal the sports animal club thing? party yeah. thing. Whatever. I don't know. It has the word sausage and animal and sports and party and club in some order on there. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're not yeah. award winners, but they're definitely worth way more than the dollar you paid for. And it. you get a couple of kids in the room and a couple of adults and try to play that game together as like a cohesive unit, and only chaos will happen, and, and it's really fun. just goofballing around the entire time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that one, I, I, it may not, you know, it didn't necessarily be super disappointing for me, because, I mean, I only paid 99 cents, so there wasn't a lot of hype build up, but, Yeah, but it was still, know. it was still bad. Yeah. But keep in mind, most disappointing is a different category. Oh, yeah. This one is just flat out worst. Oh, I know. Like, even if you had no expectations going in. Okay, so for me, the worst... And this one you might have predicted is uh, Dynasty Warriors 9. Oh, God, yeah. I wasn't going to take that one from you. <laughs> oh, yeah, because that was... Oh, jeez. So, so, anyone who didn't watch the episode, we actually did this. Keep in mind, this is a, you know, current-gen current gen game. This was like, you know, Xbox One and PS4. Yeah. But they touted it as an open-world game... You know, they, they're not doing the, you know, just kill a thousand people because reasons. You're yeah. actually going out, seeing all of China, and it's great. But the problem with it was there was nothing to do in that open world. And it looked about as good as the PS2 games. Yeah, like in Fallout, or Bethesda games in general, like, you have, you have an open world, and they tell you, okay, here's your next quest, go here. But the problem is when you're going there you find all these interesting things. And you're like, holy crap, there's all this other stuff I can do, and it's amazing. But Dynasty Warriors, there wasn't anything to do. It was yeah. just an empty horse ride from, you know, one area to the next. And there was... Yeah, it, it didn't was, even do the Japanese open world thing. It just was... Just emptiness. Bad. Yeah. Just, okay, I'm gonna wait for... Like, they actually put in an auto ride function... Yeah. For the for the horse, and it felt necessary because you didn't want to just sit there, doing nothing the whole time. And like you said, it looked bad. Like remember the trees? Yeah. Like it was just a tree trunk, but it had like the two D like textures of leaves just kind of cross hatched over each other. Yeah. But the tree, and like was... that's good for a distance, but when you pop it in, the PS4 is capable of like like procedurally generating trees. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. That was ugh, God. Yeah. I was I was so upset. Not to mention, and this is this is something more as a as a longtime Dynasty Warriors fan. One thing I always liked was how unique the weapons were. Everyone yeah. had like you know in the early games it was pretty simple swords, spears, whatever. But as the series progressed, the weapons got more outlandish, and it was great. You had this dude that had a you know he held a cannon under his arm with a giant blade underneath it. Yeah. So it was like a mix of a tanfa and a cannon and crap. There was another dude who used wing blades, but he literally flew around with them. Yeah. And then in Dynasty Warriors 9, everyone just had... Everyone just move swaps. Buy all the DLC. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they took away a bunch of the unique weapons, and they're like, oh, by the way, if you have the season pass, we'll sell the, the unique weapons back to you as DLC. Yep. 
<sighs> yeah, the, mm, Dynasty Warriors 9 was... That was painful. Yeah. And I can't remember if we played this one on the channel or not, which is pathetic, but... Uh, what? My most disappointing... We haven't gotten there yet. Oh, I thought you... you wanted no. To, oh, your least favorite was... No, that was, that was least favorite. Yeah, yeah we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Hold on a second. Uh, before we... Before we get into that, did you want to start the next one? Did you want to swap out or? Um, yeah. Let me or go ahead. Just, and... Or we just going like winner stays? Uh, I don't know, but I'll swap somebody in. All right, I'll do. I'll do winner stays. So I'll keep Bird up in there. So who are we? Uh, oh, you Samus? Yeah. All right. We got Lady Aaron. Yep. Oh, good. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, what was it? The most surpri surprisingly good game. Surprisingly good. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you want to cheat a little bit, I actually I had three of them on this one. <laughs> so if you want to cheat and pick, you know, do more than one, go for it. Okay. Well, one that that actually took me by surprise as to how much I ended up enjoying it was um, the honestly just a mode, and that was the like Splatoon-ish mode in Brawl. Oh yeah. The, yeah. Uh, Paintamonium. Yeah, was that was just, like that right there. Had only that been included in the game for the ninety nine cents, it would have been enough. Oh yeah, and just the 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 fact that it, it there was more game there, and I'm pretty sure I could delve into it and get you know several hours out of it. You know, I'd enjoy it. You know, um, I mean, we played a lot of surprising games. I, the ninety nine cent ones, like I none of them I hated. Yeah, but, those were uh, I, most of them were definitely worth the money. I even for. feel Paranautical Activity is good in the right version. I'm gonna try the PC version because I think I own it already. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go with like I had a blast with Brawl, and I want to say there was another one of the multiplayer ones we did that I enjoyed, but honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, what you got? Another one. Uh, so I gotta I gotta go with Maze. I didn't say that is my best one, because yeah. I don't think it was the best, but it was absolutely way better than I thought it would be. Yeah. I was not expecting it to be, you know, nearly... Because you remember the first, like, two episodes, I thought it was, like, a horror yeah. game, because of the way they presented the beginning. Oh, they absolutely present it in a creepy way, and then pull the rug out, out from under you with the, with the introduction to the corn, because you're unsettled, and then you realize they're yeah. idiots, and it's like, oh... That's what channel we're on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, wait a minute. What? This is not nearly as scary as I thought it would be. What's going on here? Uh, but I did say I have three of them. Yeah, so, go ahead. Get, nail them. Because we okay. did a lot of budget titles this year, so I, I'm willing so to allow this. Well, the thing is, the other two aren't really budget titles. Yeah. Well, maybe one, you could kind of call it. Okay, so one of them... I might be cheating because the game itself came out last year, but... This particular thing came out this year. The Octo expansion. Oh, yeah. For yeah. Splatoon. Because... Like, I didn't expect it to be bad. Don't get me wrong. But I thought it was just going to be... More of another, the same. Yeah, another story mode. Get from point A to point B. Here's more stages. Have fun. I didn't think it would be like... A plot. Uh, what was it? Well, I did kind of... Well, I did know it was going to be, um, you know, plot. Because they did say, hey, we're going to build on the lore on this one. But gameplay-wise, I didn't expect it to be... Uh, what was the name? Of, uh, was it the VR missions on Metal Gear Solid? Where yeah. They may have you do like just assorted other stuff. Yeah, like like a challenge mode. Almost. Yeah. I didn't think it would be that. I was thinking, you know, here, here's your gun. Go point A, point B. Have fun. There you go. Go fight a boss, and there it is. Just more. Yeah, but actual player. new gimmicks were kind of included in yeah. a way that that surprised me. Yeah, I, I I agree there. Like I would love to see them do another, even if it's not you know Octo expansion, if it's. Just another challenge mode? That would be great. Yeah. In that case, I would also have to say most of the DLC for Shantae fits under that, too. Because the, the you know, the, the Pirate Queen, like, it set up what the DLC was going to be. The same levels rehashed over and over again. And with a couple of minor exceptions, I legitimately enjoyed the rehashing of those levels. I new mechanics. I kind of want to agree and disagree with you on that one. Because the... Pirate Queen's Quest DLC was absolutely great. Like, yeah. it still felt... It still had the same Metroidvania feel mm -hmm. that the main game had. You know, you're getting new powers, and you're able to get new unlockables as you do so. And bath so. time. And, right, and bath time, yeah, definitely. But the other ones just felt like arcade mode. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, it introduced new ways to play, but... It it's, also gave us new flavors of Shantae, like but idiot never, Shantae. Right, which is nice, but it, it's, it never felt... It still felt really samey. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's still the same game, it's still arcade mode, it's just, here's a new gimmick. So, I don't know. I, the parts of that I want to agree with, other parts I don't. I like the way that the, the text framed the rehashing, is what I would say. 
Like, uh, having the one guy be the secret agent that you beat the crap out of by accident. Um, right, like but the, I, that's, that's mo- I've seen... I think that's mostly because of the it needed sort of filler, like just a reason yeah. for it to happen. But the filler was written strong. I felt like the jokes were solid. The I only thing that fell flat was that you were wearing a diaper the whole time. Yeah, in Ninja DLC. Yeah, that was stupid. That was an incredibly dumb joke, and it was stupid, and it was the yeah. worst way to end the uh, the DLC playthrough. But um, yeah, I'd say the last one though. The last one was West of Loathing. Yeah. Because. Like, I remember when I was looking through the stat screen, and I'm thinking, oh, what does any of this shit mean? I don't know, spleen capacity? <laughs> would it stomach? Liver? Yeah. Ca- oh, shoot, we didn't press the thing. It's fading out. But I was like, what is any of this crap? And everything's like, oh, you get stat bonuses for end of day. But when you actually play for a little bit and you understand yeah. how everything works, there's a surprisingly deep play... Um, what's what's the word? Uh, like the Surprisingly the strong meta? To it, I like, like just all the the tweaking of the how you, just tweaking the skills can change up the gameplay. Yeah. yeah, and also just like how the concept of you know the day cycles and like food and stats and certain things. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get the next one. If uh, if Bird Up wins this one, I'm gonna retire him and bring someone else in. <laughs> uh, Meta Man X, are you kidding me with this? I couldn't find Kirby, so I made him. I made a Kirby. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> But yeah, West of Loathing. When you scratch beneath the surface, it's it was actually a, a really good, uh, a really interesting battle system to it. And it also has a surprisingly deep lore going on in its weirdness. Yeah, not to mention it was just damn funny. Yeah, like that was that was a big thing. Like you got it, you were like, hey, hell, you should play this because it's dumb and it's stupid. And I'm like, yeah. okay, fine. I watched somebody else play. It, I was like, this is like legitimately giggle worthy throughout and. It was, don't get me wrong, yeah. but it was also a surprisingly good game underneath yeah, it. Yeah, it's so like it's... the Lego movie. The jokes happen so fast that even the ones that don't land, it doesn't linger on. So yeah. I'm going to keep going back to that as my metric for judging a good, funny experience. Like how it compares to the Lego movie? <laughs> yeah. Like, if, you, if, if you're funny enough and you have really clever jokes, it's okay if a few don't hit because you've already moved on to the next one while you're contemplating whether or not that last one was funny. Right. But okay. I'm... Um... Oh, there we go on. I don't remember where I was going with it. Oh, okay. I do have a, a, a category or two to add in once you've gotten through yours. Okay, yeah. all right. Kind of wish you'd have told me so I'd have an answer prepared, but I uh, guess we're just going with that. All right, so last one. Most disappointing game. All right. So this is the one I thought I was going to be cheating on because I can't remember if we did this one on the channel, but I swear I thought we did. But And I'm going to catch some flack for this, but I, we, we played it, and I thought, okay, maybe I'm missing something, so I went and bought it. And uh-huh. then I ended up, like, returning it within, like, two days because I hated it. And that okay. was the new Soul Calibur. Did we play that on the channel? We didn't. Okay. We did not play. I think, yeah, you're absolutely cheating. We didn't play that one. Okay. So. But uh, to be honest, I actually was considering asking you if you wanted to play that for the uh, the fighting game we play for this one rather than Smash. And yeah. I, I, I guess that's your I've made answer. my opinion to you known about that game. I, I guess uh, that's your answer. Yeah. Soul Calibur 6, or as I like to call it, Soul Calibur 3 with pretty backgrounds. Okay. I just... But I like Soul Calibur 3. I just, I could not get into 6. I tried all the modes. Nothing hooked me. I thought the character creator felt, I don't, I don't know what I was expecting out of it, but it felt more limited to me. And I don't know why that is. I just wasn't enjoying any second of what I was playing. And I usually at least have a blast dicking around with the character creator. Never to your level of skill with yeah, it. Yeah, I, dude, I, I could know. spend hundreds of hours on that. I, I could make an awesome gender swap Freddy Krueger and a fairly decent Harley Quinn. That's about it. But I just <laughs> okay. found myself not enjoying any of it. And it wasn't even like to the point where like I want to say it was Soul Calibur Five where they say malfested like it's a comma. Yeah. Uh, like at least in that one I got to enjoy it as a drinking game. But I just could not find anything in Six to like. And I'm sorry if we didn't play that. One. So I'll, I'll think of another one that we actually played while you're coming up with yours. Okay. So. I have an answer already, so go ahead. Okay, no, go ahead. You're on a roll. Shaq Fu. Okay. Um, I was act- that was actually going to be one of my answers as well. <laughs> oh, there you go. That was that was also going to be one yeah. of my answers, Shaq Fu. Because, like, don't get me wrong. I wasn't expecting it to be award-winning. I wasn't expecting miracles. Yeah. But, you know, with all the promos that were happening beforehand, you know, being voiced by Shaq, I kept seeing all these advertisements, the... The animated cutscenes and everything. Yeah, the thought, self-awareness oh. it appeared to have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I expected it to be at least enjoyable for a bit. Which, 
Now, I did enjoy it at least a little bit, but it wasn't $60 worth in, of enjoyment. No, and, and it got, wore itself thin fast. See, you, you actually got tired of the humor a lot quicker than I did. Yeah. Like, you seem to be genuinely bothered. Well, I mean, it. it started falling into, like, dangerous territory of, of we're not, it stopped laughing at itself. I started feeling like it was laughing at other people and like then being it, real smug about it. Like it got very politically incorrect, more or less? That doesn't even bother me. I'm all for some political incorrectness. But it's the fact that the game was marketing itself for having a, a self-deprecating sense of humor. And instead it started just mocking other people. Yeah. Kind of like the way that bad spoof movies do it. Like a good spoof movie, like Naked Gun, is making fun of itself throughout bad spoof movies like Enter the Spartans you know it's oh, it's just like hey do you see that reference we made aren't foreign people hilarious Jeez. you know yeah they're brown was, and that's funny like i didn't i didn't dislike it as much as you did but i did feel like it got very samey yeah like the the main um the main storyline didn't get as samey as the Barack DLC yeah. That we played like that was that exaggerated it yeah. bad, and the Barack thing didn't offend me at all. I thought that was hilarious, turning him into a dirty hairy kind of it character. It was hilarious. Yeah. I loved it, but the problem was it was a very one note joke, and then it yeah, and it ran out quick. It yeah. was done. I was done with it before the first level was over. Yeah. Well, the funny thing, I went back to actually finish it because you know I hadn't played the Barack DLC before we put it on the channel. Yeah. But that uh, apparently that part yeah. that we quit on, it was like two screens away from the uh, from the end of the first stage. Ah. But even still, with how long those screens were lasting, yeah. that's still a fairly extensive period of time. Yeah, it felt like it was padding just to make the DLC feel longer. Like somebody yeah. played through it, it was like, oh my god, this is too long. Add 80 more waves in the screen. Yeah. Now granted, at least it was free. Yeah. So it didn't, you're not paying money just to do the same. But, I mean, it still felt really old. Like, remember when you got the, uh, the, Dirty Berry power up where you got infinite ammo and you just yeah. unload. It was super fun at first, but then it's like, all right, it was cool, but are we done yet? Yeah. Can we can we move on? But yeah, that was that was one of mine. The other one was um, was I, I got to revisit this Dynasty Warriors Nine. Yeah, because yes, we've established that it's bad. I'm not gonna sit here and dwell on it, but it was most disappointing for me because keep in mind I've been a Dynasty Warriors fan since the second game, and that was a PS2 launch title. Yeah. So for as long as I've been a fan, all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know that series you really love? We made it garbage. Yeah. Also, I'm going to have to correct you here. You you have yeah. elevated beyond fan of Dynasty Warriors. You are a scholar of Dynasty Warriors because it's... It, you're not like me and like you like to just go off on tangents about random trivia about stuff. But I can trigger you to just go off on like full on lectures into the history of the Three <laughs> Kingdoms period and whatever else is in Dynasty Warriors. And it's fascinating because I actually like hearing people spout just streams of consciousness about this. And this is the only thing I can get you to like truly nerdily gush out about about something that I don't actually have any real knowledge of. Also, I just noticed your name, and I'm not angry about it. What? <laughs> I mean, I feel like you know, it's this is nonfiction right here. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's that is definitely an accurate depict description of uh, of Daisy. Yeah. Had it been the real Meta Knight and not Kirby dressing up as Meta Knight, I think I would have won. <laughs> But did you have another uh, amiibo you wanted um, to use, or did you? Want yeah, to I've got, actually got another amiibo to throw in here. Okay, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, honestly, I think I don't know if we addressed this on the show, but I think yeah, I might have to use mine. Right. Okay, here we go. But um, but oh, sorry, the, go ahead. yeah, the, I think the reason puffy jigs. All right, but yeah, no, the because uh, honestly, the whole Dynasty Wars thing, just the story of Romance of Three Kingdoms. Yeah. Like, okay, so the main idea is oh, everyone, all the kingdoms are just trying to. To take over China, whatever. There it's, can be only one. <laughs> it's yeah. The main story is dumb and it's stupid. It's just a bunch of warlords wanting to beat up the other warlord. But my it's army's, so well documented. My army's bigger than <laughs> yours, whatever. And not really, because honestly, the story Three Kingdoms yeah kind of butchers actual history. Oh yeah. It kind of plays up the uh, accomplishments of one other. Uh, yeah. One particular army, even if they did nothing, in some parts. But no, it's just the little stories, like you know the. Like, some, like, two of my favorites. I'm not going to actually go in-depth with them because they're so <laughs> just time-consuming. But just, like, the description of two of them. Like, the love triangle between Diao Chan, Lu Bu, and Dong Zhuo is one of my favorites. 
uh, how Xiao Houdun lost his eye and got pissed off and killed the person who did it rather than just, you know, ba- you know bowing out of the fight. Yeah. The, like, those are two of my favorite stories, and it's great. And there's more stuff like that in it, and that's why I love the Three Kingdoms so much. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think... Sorry, yes! Was, oh, damn, back up! <laughs> why are you running at her? Why would you run at Jigglypuff when she does that? That is the greatest final smash in this game. Also... I kind of want to address something regarding yeah. our amiibos because I was sitting there training my Daisy for like a long time because I was I was looking online like how do you what's the best way to train up your amiibos and they were people were saying oh yeah the best way to do it is to actually fight you know mirror matches one v one against uh, you know whatever amiibo you're training and I was like okay cool so you know she'll learn the moves that I use but she keeps doing this thing where she hovers about a foot over the ground and just keeps going side to side yeah that I never do. And I'm like, why are you doing that? That's I've never taught you this. Ugh. I wonder what it smells like after she deflates. After she's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the air out? Oh, yeah. But no, you said you had one more... Uh... Now, I did teach her that one. Yeah. I used that one a lot. The little crown smack thing. You said oh, you had one more question. Yeah, because I kind of wanted to expand beyond just what we've played here, too. I want to know, like, you know, like, what game did you play that we haven't that that you were surprised by? Like, that we haven't done on the channel. Like, surprisingly good or surprisingly bad? We'll go both. Oh, shoot. See, I had not had time to think about this, because I don't... Well, while you think about it, I yeah, can go mention for mine. It. Yeah, go so, for it. So, the one that surprised me under the surprisingly good, I, uh, I recently did the Xbox Game Pass, uh-huh. and because I knew that it had um, one game that I wanted, and I figure, I got a free week, I'll try it to see if I like this one game, and then, holy crap, there's a bunch of other stuff on there. Can you pass me a nibble while you're talking? And, uh... Yeah, um, where you at? Here we go. This guy? Yeah. All right. But, um, I ended up, I, I've mentioned it a few times on here, but the game Graveyard Keeper. I oh, normally yeah. don't like the, the, the farmer fantasy genre of games. You know, right. I have uh, so many Harvest Moon games because my wife's a big fan of Harvest Moon. I have Stardew Valley, and none of those have been able to really hook me. Um, the closest, like, do a daily task sort of game was honestly loosely connected and that's like your uh, your dungeon maker games you know right where you you have to build it daily and then test it out yeah but graveyard keeper with its beautiful music amazing pixel art and kind of dark story that's not afraid to be a little humorous at times ended up just owning me for about a month it was all i wanted to play i didn't even play my ps4 at all when i first got into it and the game's not even Jeez. finished yet there's entire sections of the game that they haven't even added in because it's kind of early access okay and like, I'm, I still haven't completed most of it, and there's a lot that I have to do, but um, it's... Like, if you like Harvest Moon even a little bit, but wish it had uh, it, it wasn't the same basic plot over and over again, yeah. check this one out. Because you're a guy from the regular world, gets hit and killed by a car while looking at his phone, texting his wife, saying he'll be there soon. Okay. And you wake up in this village, which is kind of Inquisition era like, small European village. Oh, okay. And it's uh, the town and the village. They're two areas that, through some ancient religious pact, have a delicate balance between the two of them. The church has no real control over the town. Or, no, it has no control over the village, and the church runs the town. And you have your own church you run where you bury the dead for the town. And okay. And it, it's how everything keeps in balance. And you make money for everybody you bury. Okay, great. And you have to keep the grounds nice eventually you run a farm and you end up doing so many little tasks that each have their own skill trees to them that the game's like animal crossing with a dark side and i absolutely love this game okay um yeah but say let me get one more i'm gonna grab one and this guy's probably not leveled up at all you gotta give me something leveled up (laughs) i'm not gonna have my level 50s pick on like a level 10 all right then we're gonna go back to all right yeah because i only had five prepped for this one well that's fine i only had four prepped so, but uh, but yeah, just that, so just that my Daisy is apparently cleaning house, and then uh, I mean the one that was most disappointing, uh, like that I that we didn't play on the channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to give that one to one that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that it's not good. But I was actually disappointed with Metal Gear Survive. I wanted it to be good. I wanted to be pleasantly surprised by how good it was, <laughs> and. It started out that I was impressed by it. Like, okay, I get these mechanics. The combat is still really good. The plot is, like, cohesive enough. Paper thin. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> it, it sets me into it right. Uh, the 
they, they added a few things here and there that kind of make it a little better, and I was actually fairly decent at the early matches with my fence building skills and my poking things through the fence skills. And then I realized that I was going to have to pay more money to build another loadout or have to completely strip my character down, forget what items I had equipped, and oh, yeah, just re-equip ten, everything. The ten bucks for another save slot? And then I noticed if I wanted to have multiple save slots to try out different loadouts, I was going to have to pay for them. Yeah. Dude, that cracked uh, me up. Like, what What game makes you freaking pay? Okay. Like, I didn't ex- honestly didn't expect it to be good. Because as soon as they said Metal Gear with zombies, I was like, why would you do this? Don't. Please don't. And yeah. they absolutely did. But, oh, shoot. Most surprisingly good game that we didn't play. Because I'm trying to think of, like, other good, like, surprisingly good games, but we did play them. Because that's... Because the only other things I'm thinking are, like, Death Road to Canada, which, surprisingly good, but we did play it. Yeah. Because, honestly, you, you gotta remember how I, how I play games when it's not on the channel. I tend to just... Like, I play only a few games, and I lean on them, like, super hard until I'm done. Yeah. Well, you so did that finally kinda... start playing a game that you bought, like, just before the channel started. Oh, Fallout 4? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean... No surprise there. It's actually good. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Like, it's not... It's by no means awful, like people were saying, but I can see where the complaints are, to be honest. Especially with the, the settlement building, because... Like, I didn't mind... I actually liked the settlement building in 4. Yeah. But I can definitely see where other people would complain about it. Because you have to get a bunch of supplies. And you got to make a bunch of these buildings, like, piece by piece. And when they integrate it so hard into one of the faction storylines, it's like... Mm, that kind of shuts people off from wanting to do that storyline. Because they're making people do this building mechanic they might not like. Yeah. Now, again, I was fine with it. Because, you know, I would... I could get stuff from these settlements. I get more money and more resources, so I was good with it, but yeah. other people might not be. That reminds me, the season pass is like 15 bucks right now on the PlayStation Store. I need to get it. Oh, I thought you were going to say for, uh, for Fallout 76 or something. Oh, I was like, no. oh god, why would you? Though, humorously, uh, apparently in another apology, uh, if you have played Fallout 76 with your account, uh, yeah, you get a free copy of Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics. Yeah, the old ones. Yeah. <laughs> The ones that are, like, maybe three bucks a piece anyway. Yeah. The ones that were given away for free for several weeks because of the whole GOG thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I'm, I'm seriously trying to think of, like, stuff that we hadn't played on the channel, because... Yeah, because keep in mind, I don't have... I don't expand very far outside of my usual, like, you know, small little list of... little list of games. Yeah. I've actually found a simple single-player game that I'd like you to try for the channel, and it's actually one of my favorite mobile games of the year. I actually have all four of the titles, and they just ported the first one to the Switch, and that is The Room. And I don't mean, oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. (laughs) No. Uh, This is a Victorian-era scientist. You're trying to go find this guy. He's missing. His name is A.S., and... Oh, isn't that the one? It's like the uh, the puzzle thing. Yeah, it's like you're in L room with a puzzle box, and the more you open the puzzle box, the more it becomes a more intricate puzzle leading right. to whatever the mystery is. And there are now four games in the series. I, I have all of them, and they the, the 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 lore gets so good. I don't know that I'd have the patience for that though. Oh, but you also have me who can help you, and the game does give you uh, whenever you are like if you're literally stuck just a little question mark pops up in the corner and it's like hey uh you uh recently got that key maybe see if you can find something that looks like it'll fit you know like they start with blatantly obvious clues in case you just haven't played in a couple of weeks and forgot what you were doing and then it's like this box looks like it might have had a keyhole on it and they're not going to tell you where the keyhole is but you know they'd be like oh okay so i need to go to this side of the room look at the box on the shelf and then you rotate it around look on the bottom and under a little corner flap that you move, there's a keyhole. It's like, oh, okay, I got it. Okay. You know, the game still makes you feel clever, and the games get more and more beautiful and intricate as they go along. Uh, there's even one where you have... You're in a room, and on a table is uh, a replica of the house you're in. And as you're shifting things, you're opening up stuff, and then you use your scope to look at the room, and suddenly you're teleported to that room, and you look out the window, and you see the room you were in before... So now you're in the dollhouse doing puzzles in there, and the freakiest part is you finally get to one of the rooms in the dollhouse, and on the table, 
is a dollhouse. <laughs> And you're doing even more puzzles on another oh my version. God. But it's a lot faster version. It's not like, oh, you have to do the whole game over again because all the puzzles are new. Uh, but but at that point, you've learned all the tricks the game has so you can quickly get through a series of puzzles on that. And then it's like, oh, okay. And you zoom into the dollhouse more and it's another slightly less intricate version. Like the level of detail is decreasing as you're going to, to inside and inside and, and inside. And that's about the point my patience would be done. <laughs> The way it's handled, though, is not in an annoying way. It's more of a, how deep does this rabbit hole go? And you get the sense you're getting closer and closer to the solution. And because it's a model in a model in a model, the level of detail is lowering. Like, the first one looks like an intricately built dollhouse. The second one looks like a tinier, soft focus version of it. And then you get closer, and it's like a tiny paper mache version. Like, the level, the, it's just... Kind of like if you put a model house inside a model house inside a model house. Eventually, you're just looking at a sticker. You know? Inside a simulation, inside a simulation. Yeah. And it, it doesn't... The way I'm describing it sounds like it's it's a just a frustrating constant repeat, but the puzzles are different each time. It's just with a similar frame around it. And that's not even until you get to the fourth game anyway. And by then, you know what you're in for with them. Okay. Come on, dee 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 You're better than this. <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, I, I wouldn't mind getting you to, to check out just The Room. Was there anything that, that you have played this year that you wouldn't mind me playing on the channel? See, I would have said Soul Calibur VI, but then you vehemently dislike that one. I am not against giving it another try. It's just, I, it also may have just been where I was at the time. Okay. Uh, and that I just wasn't able to enjoy it myself. Now... I'm not against trying it here and, you know, getting me to like it, you know. Okay. I am not averse to developing Stockholm for a game. Okay. <laughs> I do talk about Virtual Highlight rather often, after all. A disturbing amount. <laughs> so there's one thing I want to do before we finish this up. Okay. Because this actually, this episode's going a bit longer than I expected it to. I didn't, I didn't expect you to come up with another, uh, with another, what's it called? Yeah. Like a series of questions that I was very much not prepared to answer. Okay. So, I think we need to do just a 4v4 okay. with some of our Amiibos. Sure. Just end it. Just Like, you and me, pick, pick three of them. Alright, so let me... I know the three that put up the best fight. I was watching. <laughs> you, were, you were watching it? Yeah. Alright, so hold on. Let me, let me throw my guy in there. Uh, oh, shoot. Wrong. Uh, do you not have your controller connected? Oh, you have to hit the LNR. The LNR. The top two. There you go. Go ahead and pick your character. I'll okay. set these for the. Because it's always Kirby. Yeah, of course. Alright, so let me grab. Now, yeah? Are we doing it like against our amiibos or around teams? I was gonna I was gonna say be on our teams. Okay. Like me and three of my amiibos, you and three of your amiibos. Sure, go ahead. Alright. Let me grab. Me. Then in that case, right. wouldn't I have to set the other three to the amiibo so that it knows they're my amiibos? No. Oh, okay. Why? I'm just making sure for the team thing. No, the team thing is on a is up at the top. Let me grab one of them. Don't don't throw like three. Put of them all on at the same time. It, like you're trying to cram like three amiibos on my hand, and one of them's Didi Didi, -di who's like eight pounds by himself, half my body mass. All right. All right, there we go. Fantastic. Let me. Change. There we go. Wow. Then, uh, I see like one. All right, we got two on. puffy people, two big dudes, a couple of ladies. I just need. I need to change it to. I can only handle being blue. I'm. I'm incredibly racist. I, I don't like uh, anything that's not blue. Eiffel 65 has really good news for you. <laughs> oh man, I like them already. Did I put the teams? I did put the teams right. Okay. There is going to be so much. Absurd shit happening at once. All right, bye, y'all. Is that what's happening? <laughs> I, say, I I don't think that. Really? Yeah, I'm an idiot. Is is that how that goes? Is this big battlefield? Yeah, this is the big one. Okay. Cause last time we tried to do a four v four, it was on the uh, what was it the the pick the chat, and that stage is way too small to be doing a four v four with anything. I'm trying to figure out where the oh. Excuse you. Excuse you. <laughs> hey, hey, are you running? I think you're running. Where are you going? 
It's called going for backup. Uh, it's a legitimate strategy. Blocking Come it here. for chumps. Is that right? Is that right? Is, is getting headbutt for chumps as well? Yep. <laughs> I'm soft and squishy. You're doing more damage to you than me. <laughs> All right. Well, you... Oh, shit. Ugh! Oh, crap. Whee! Oh, someone else got him. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I'm going to hit him. I don't know where I'm going. Come here. There is so much stuff happening at once. I'm, I thought having the big battlefield would be easier, but it's only marginally so. Heh. Oh, no, 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 no. Is everyone just Good job! <laughs> hi. Yeah, hi. Did you just run at me? Yep. Alright, hold on a second. What right. was that? I said your mom's a butt! Yeah, what now? Come here, where's the... Is that... Okay, I'm going over here. Jeez. I saw the glowy thing, I was like, please don't use it here. Please don't use it here. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh darn. Okay. Where yet? Hi. Hi. Bye. I don't know what you're talking about. What's wrong? Oh, I got your friend. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. She doesn't get to use her super. That's that's good enough for me. Oh, oh, we're just stopping everything to watch this happen. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Man, someone felt like they needed to be center of attention. Yep. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. All right, there's one. Come on, where's... Okay, there's one. Oh, oh, Jigglypuff still has a, uh... Come here, you. Quit running! Why are you running? Get back here! <laughs> what have you been teaching your Jigglypuff? How to retreat? Yes. Hi! Okay, time to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't mind me. I'm just kind of... Oh, dang it. <laughs> Come on. Eh. Oh, only Jigglypuff is yeah, last. Yeah, oh, Jigglypuff is the last <laughs> one. Man, I expected I'd eliminate at least one of yours, but I'm mm -hmm. also not very good at this game. No, well, that's why you have the Amiibos, to, to make up for uh, any slack. Because I, I know I was on my last life <laughs> by the end of it. Uh, did Jay Daisy just rocked everyone? Yep. How many... How many she got? Oh, you got Hey, got I got four. one KO. She got four <laughs> kills. All right. So, end of the... Uh, End of the year, end of the episode. Oh, yeah. But feel free to share your games, too, in the comments. This is one I want to look over the comments and kind of see what you guys think on, you know, games you liked, games you didn't, games we played that, you know, you enjoyed, any that you want to see us do again. Uh, suggestions for games, you know. Uh, clearly, you've seen what games work on this channel and which ones don't. We are, we are terrible at games that require us to both be, like, co-op action shooter man at the same time because we just don't communicate at all. Trying to think, how did that one YouTuber call it? Uh, soapy Water? Yeah. Named after the uh, that guy in Call of Duty? Yeah. Alright. See ya. See ya in next year.